Today, our topic is captioned, Sensible Dating. By divine design, attraction between opposite sexes is biblical, normal, natural, and beneficial. Truly, opposites attract, as it is often said. But the mere feeling of attraction and attachment for the opposite sex is not enough to build a meaningful and lasting relationship like marriage. It takes more than just a feeling or attraction to sustain a marital relationship. Marriage is a lifelong relationship. Therefore, it should be consciously entered into. In marriage, indeed, you are permitted to find your spouse. And this process of finding begins with dating. What is dating? Somebody might ask. Indeed, the subject of dating can be a very touchy one for Christians of all ages. The dictionary, however, defines dating as a stage of romantic relationship whereby two people meet socially with the aim of assessing the other's suitability as a prospective marriage partner. As Christians, the Bible, however, does not endorse the recreational or shopping around kind of dating that the world practices today. Dating as a Christian should be intentional. And every young fellow needs to understand this as well as parents. Dating is part of the process of finding an appropriate person of the opposite sex who you would spend the rest of your life with in marriage. To be sensible, on the other hand, means to do or to choose something in accordance with wisdom or prudence. Thankfully, you have a dating guide, and that's the Bible. It teaches you what it means to love another person, how to date with wisdom, and how to build a successful relationship. It's wisdom to hold on to this word of God. Sensible dating can be defined as a fact-finding process in which two matured Christian singles of the opposite sex seek to know each other so as to be able to make a quality decision concerning marriage. It is dating with a clear purpose, end goal, and guidelines. And I'm choosing my words very carefully. I mentioned about opposite sexes because in the world today, you find two individuals, young people, even old people, are getting involved in it of the same sex, dating each other. This is clearly unbiblical. God gave you sense so you can give him rest, says Dr. David Oyedeko. And how true that is. Dating should eventually lead to a closer loving relationship of mutual respect that would in time bring you to the point of marriage. The question then is, who should date? It is advised that the dating relationship be engaged in by matured ladies and men who have set boundaries in place and who understand how to relate respectfully with other people, especially of the opposite sex. This is very crucial. Dating is not meant for young boys and girls who are only interested in the company of the opposite sex. It is not uncommon today to find boys and girls in secondary school who are not even teenagers yet dating each other. This can be very dangerous. This is why some young people fall in and out of love at the drop of a heart. As soon as the excitement in one relationship drops, they begin another one. This is very dangerous. So be sure before you involve someone else that you are mentally and emotionally ready for a committed relationship. Unlike the roller coaster, breezy and always changing face of attraction, which many young people mistake for love, 
Dating is meant to be between a matured woman and man working towards a successful relationship. I want to share with you briefly at this point some guidelines, therefore, that will help you for sensible dating. Guideline number one, be purposeful. Purpose, they say, is power. Dating without prospect of marriage is tantamount to playing with fire. And you cannot play with fire and not be burnt. Your destiny shall not be burnt in Jesus' name. To avoid getting into an ungodly trap or becoming a stumbling block to another, you must be purposeful from the beginning. Be sure of your intentions while dating. Ensure you are not just dating merely to have fun. Do not date anyone except for the purpose of marrying him or her. Dating is not just having fun. You must have a clear goal for a lifelong relationship of marriage in view. If your goal is marriage, then you will be keen on determining if you can spend the rest of your life with that person or not. One of the biggest mistakes that people make is not knowing what they even want and still approaching a committed relationship as if they do. This is quite dangerous. If in the course of a relationship, both of you realize that you have made a mistake by coming together, wisdom demands that you put a stop to that relationship. Having a purpose towards entering any relationship serves as a guide to clearly establish the seriousness of your friendship and level of commitment to each other. Number two guide, very, very importantly, date only a fellow believer. 2 Corinthians 6, 14a tells us, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Listen, this is critical. Date only someone who has a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, If a man being Christ is a new creature, a believer dating an unbeliever is unequally yoked. Dating someone who doesn't have a personal relationship with Christ is playing with danger. Let Christ, therefore, be the center of your relationship. Make sure the person is not just born again, but has the evidence of it. He or she should not be someone that only you know that he or she is born again. Let there be fruits to show for his or her Christianity. Know the person's stand on spiritual matters. Do not date an unbeliever thinking you are their best chance for knowing Jesus. In other words, with the aim of converting them. Remember, the Holy Spirit is the one who convicts and converts. Any emotional attachment you have towards a person who is not on the same scriptural page as you or vice versa is an unhealthy attachment. Learn from something in the Bible and avoid destruction. You shall not be destroyed. Stick to maintaining a godly relationship no matter what's happening around you. Number three, guideline which is very important, be sensitive. Matthew 26, 41a says, Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. While dating, you should be vigilant and think wisely. Ensure you pause and watch carefully before progressing or getting too committed. Open your eyes wide because love is not blind like people say. You have to be both spiritually and physically sensitive to your date. Spiritually, pray and ensure the leading of the Holy Spirit. Physically, watch out for key character traits, personality, spirituality, and other important traits that can affect marriage positively or negatively. Ask yourself who you become when you are with him or her. There are individuals who can actually camouflage and pretend in the presence of their date. However, when they are not together, they are actually completely opposite. Do you notice positive improvements or negative vibes? Do you sense danger, 
Do you feel uneasy with him or her? Think carefully about this. Every relationship should make you better, not making you worse. If there is trouble making a commitment, then that might be a red flag to watch. How well do you communicate with your date? When you are together, do you or the other person prefer watching television, viewing social media, or being with other people? If yes, then watch it. It's a sign that communication is off. Pay attention to details. This is very important. Don't be naive. Make an effort to truly listen to the other person because by paying close attention to what they say, they do, and how they interact, even with other people, you can quickly get to know them. Beloved, little things go a long way. You can't truly pay attention when you are multitasking. Apply wisdom. How about non-verbal communication? Subtle gestures, expressions, and other visual signals, they tell us a lot about other person. But they are easy to miss unless you pay attention. So, you must be sensitive. Is your partner comfortable with you spending time with friends and family members outside of your relationship with him or her? Is there a desire on the part of one person to control the other and stop them from having independent thoughts and feelings? Set out rules and guidelines for your relationship. This is very important. Equip yourselves with adequate knowledge on how you want your relationship to be. Let your non-negotiables be known at the beginning of the relationship. This is important. Learn to be firm and stand by any boundaries made. Hear me and hear me well. Any relationship without boundaries will lead you to bondage. A word is enough for the wise. Many people have been caught unawares and destinies destroyed. Yours shall not be destroyed. Finally, number four, don't be afraid to quit. When you see that the relationship is not making a headway, or you are not at peace with yourself, or you cannot cope with his or her personality, don't be afraid to quit. Listen, faith and peace means go. However, Doubt and fear means no. Take that seriously. When your peace is threatened, don't settle. When you experience abuse of any kind, be it physical, emotional, psychological, financial, take a walk out of that relationship and take it very fast. If you are dating someone, for example, and that individual engages in physical abuse, beating you up, that should let you know you need to make a U-turn. Or if the individual takes advantage of you financially and the only thing that interests him or her is what to get from you materially, you should listen and know that there's danger somewhere. When the relationship jeopardizes your relationship with God, then you have no business being in it. Young people, listen to me very well. When you lack joy, it's time to call it off. Don't give excuses for their bad actions. And listen, find out, are there concerns about their lifestyle? Don't ignore it. Do not go into marriage with intention that you will change people because most people don't change. And I can tell you that. When the relationship is exclusively sexual or there is no interest in the other person other than a physical one, then it's time to quit. Don't cohabit or move in with your date. This is dangerous. This is highly unacceptable as it leads to both of you getting into premarital sex. Sin may be pleasurable for a season, beloved, but the aftermath can be very, very horrible. If you are living in sin, this is not to condemn you, but you need to make a U-turn. Repent and stay pure until you've said your marriage vows. Learn to exercise self-control 
and your passion towards each other. Be determined to keep yourself pure for marriage. This will bring you honor. A meaningful and fulfilling relationship does not involve sex before marriage. Don't overlook it. And of course, don't put yourself in a place of danger. Don't go for a date in the night alone in a secluded area. Don't give room to the enemy. In conclusion, clearly there are only two outcomes for dating relationships. And you need to understand this. One is marriage. Second is a breakup. Therefore, be sensitive and be sensible in your dating. Don't make your search for a relationship the center of your life. Rather, concentrate on activities that will boost your self-worth and image. God has given you sense in order to exercise sound judgment. May the wisdom of God be your portion in Jesus' name. In case you are in a dating relationship and you know it's wrong, this is the right time for you to make a U-turn. Receive the grace of God to do so. And those of you who are not into it yet, my God will guide your steps. For parents who are believing God and looking up to him for their own children to get into godly death relationship, the God of miracles will open the way for you. It is well with you in Jesus' name. Finally, are you born again? Bow your heads and pray this prayer with me right now. Heavenly Father, I come to you today. I'm a sinner. Save me, Jesus. I accept you today as my Lord and Savior. Thank you. I'm born again in Jesus' name. Amen. Congratulations if you pray that salvation prayer. Log on to the website address at the bottom of the screen and fill that form right now. Send your testimonies also through this medium and connect with the social media handles at the bottom of your screen. Make sure you locate a Bible-believing church close to you. Be committed there serving the Almighty God. And always remember, God is too faithful to fail. See you next time. Bye.